Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome to the Jack Moves Podcast. I'm Lewis. And I'm Dr. Ken. Our guest today uh, is a former adult star. Uh, she's definitely one of the one of the greats of her era. Um, and we are so happy to have you here on the Jack Moves Podcast. Our guest today, uh, Miss Vita Valentine. We welcome you to the Jack Moves Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So let us know, um, kind of like, you know, uh, basically where are you from um, and you know discuss some of the early years okay well I'm a California girl <laughs> um, I'm from uh, Pasadena um, is where I grew up at and um, I guess that's just where I'm from <laughs> <laughs> I'm from California I did when did I start porn I think I started porn when I was 23 22, 23, I believe, was when I started porn. Mm -hmm. I ran into a one of my homegirls, my little white homegirls, and she had knew um, this guy who was a uh, who was a agent, mm -hmm. and she was scared to go up there by herself, and so she asked me to come with her, and so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go with you. So I went up there with her, trying to you know be in her security yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then ended up he was like, oh no. What's up with you? I was like, who me? <laughs> and and he was like, yeah, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I think his name was Antonio. And um, and you know, we talked, and he was like, you having sex and stuff, right? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, you got bills to get paid, right? And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, he made it sound real good, and he was like, well, I'm gonna give you like a, a chance, like a little chance to see what you can do and so i was like oh okay it was like we're gonna do it right now i was like right now i guess see if he if he would have told me to do it later he probably wouldn't have got yeah, me yeah. <laughs> before, before you go into that tell us um pasadena how's how's growing up in pasadena or in that, that cali area how would you describe it um it was good. I had a, I had a good good time. I had a good childhood and everything. I was I did it. I played every single sport. Like when I say every sport, I really mean every sport. I swam. I played basketball. The cheer team. I was on the mm -hmm. um, tennis, volleyball, swimming. Yeah. I did it all. So I had a I had a good time. Yeah, I know a lot of people. So when you finished, like say school, what were you playing? Did you? Have a plan or what you think about doing? Um, when I had graduated from school, I was I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, I was pregnant. And oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not sad. I actually had a full scholarship for track. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was really good with okay. running and stuff. And so, um, I ended up getting pregnant and stuff. And so I had a baby and everything, and then you know went from there. <laughs> Now this, um, from that time, you know, uh, you said, how long from that time, you said it was a few years, what were you doing in those few years after high school, having a baby, just working regular jobs? Yeah, I, w I did telemarketing and yeah. stuff, so mm -hmm. I guess, I guess I was just in the, in the job of selling myself. <laughs> 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 I ain't mad. I ain't mad. <laughs> uh, yes, I did that for for a while, and um, and then I think I worked at like rallies or something. Okay, okay. Carl's Junior, I think. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. the time, yeah. you like Caesar Frost? Yes, yes. And I worked there for probably maybe maybe two years after that, and then I was introduced to. Mm -hmm. So on. Oh, go ahead. So what, what was home life well, like? Were you from a two-parent home, um, single mom home? What, what, what was home life like? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, no, I was in a foster home. Mm -hmm. um, but my foster parents, she loved me. She, I know she was a really, really good woman. Um, so I was like moving from home to home until I got to her home when I was probably in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with her until I became grown. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't live with my mom and father at first. My mom did some other stuff. My dad was on some other stuff. But I still came out. 
So did did you know? So you knew who your mom and your oh, father yeah. was. I, I know, I know you exactly know. who they are. I got gotcha. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you have any other siblings? Any um? Yeah, I got eight. Oh, eight. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got <laughs> Probably got more than that. I just don't know it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I got you. So, what was your mindset when Antonio? I think you said the gentleman's name was when he proposition and asked if you want to get in the industry what were you thinking like what was your state of mind at that point in time was it you know just hey I got bills to pay or was it something that you thought about before that you would, was interested in doing so I was wasn't never interested in doing right. it period when I first had started and what's crazy is that a few years prior to me actually getting into porn it was a guy his name was fashion and may he rest in peace and he was a um, agent also and I knew him when I was in high school and stuff and he had told me about it and like I had did some pictures and did a few things for him but I didn't really believe him and then when he called me back and said hey they want you I was scared mm -hmm. so I like ran off from him and I didn't see him and then a few years after that mm -hmm. my girlfriend wanted me to come down and I just happened to still run into him again so mm -hmm. it was really crazy like on that part but um after that experience so you performed at that period of time with him and then what happened next so, wait what you talking about with fashion no with antonio with antonio okay um um after i had i did i think i did like a bj scene with him mm -hmm. and um he had gave me some money and i mean i was like okay i mean I'm, i do it in, you know i have sex anyways i'm a yeah. young girl i have yeah. built and at the time i had a daughter mm -hmm. a little young daughter so i was like you know i need to figure out some other ways to provide. I mean, he made it sound so good. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't tell me about the whole other stuff that was going on in the <laughs> industry. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And when you're young, um, you know, and you need certain things, you don't have a lot of avenues. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It sounded really good. So I just went ahead and went with him. And when I had did my, I think my second, the second scene, because the first one with the BJ, the second scene that I had did, I did it for West Coast Production, and that's where I met Dominico. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So at this time you're still in California. So yeah. Always just transparent. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. In California. Mm -hmm. I got you. So did you have anybody to talk to when you got like you know your your foster parents or your parents? Did you tell anybody about this experience and what oh, you were planning on doing? Um. <laughs> I told my mother. You did tell your mother. Yes, before I got ready to do it, okay. and I had let her know what was going on, and she was so upset with me. And she was like, "Well, once you do that, you can't take it back. Mm -hmm. They're gonna know it forever. Like you could do it, whatever you do under the, you know, without mm -hmm. anybody knowing with the door closed. You can have sex with this person, that person. It doesn't matter. And you do it on camera. You can't take that back. And I'm like, Mom, but I'm gonna be a star. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, uh, my mom, she stopped talking to me for like three years. For three years? Because of that? Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. So what about your siblings at the time? Did they, uh, you know, I know you told your mom. So eventually when the rest of the family heard about it, what were their reactions? Oh, like my auntie and mm -hmm. my sister and them, oh, they was down. Oh, you know, my right. auntie was helping me sell movies and stuff out the <laughs> trunk of her car. We was riding and she had... Uh, 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 videos and stuff on her dashboards in the back seat and stuff. So we used to ride playing the movies <laughs> 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 on Crenshaw and everything. We were selling uh, movies and all kind of stuff. Yeah. And my auntie was like, "Shit, if you're gonna do it, be the best at it. Don't yeah. ever be ashamed of nothing that you do." Sure. I said, "Okay, auntie." So that was my real support. You I know what you. I'm saying? She had my back. My auntie still got my back That's right my now. Mind. Yes. So how are you? Um, okay, you said you did a scene. Are you? You know, you you were able to do it. Are you feeling? Nervous? Absolutely. You were nervous doing it. Did you have to talk you into it a little bit or maybe, you know, I don't know, take a drink or Um, no, I think the money at the time was talking more to me than anything. I need I need that. <laughs> yes, I think the money was talking to me more. So I had a lot of other stuff going on in my life at that time and so I guess that opportunity right then was just like perfect to the mm -hmm. solution that I had going on in my life so mm -hmm. yeah I wasn't I was nervous absolutely I was very nervous because I didn't know what to expect what was going to happen or mm -hmm. what you know I didn't know anything and I didn't have anybody to 
pre-warn me about like watch out for this or watch out or do this or do that you know what i'm saying and so i just went in there blind mm -hmm. and you did say you had an agent right so antonio he didn't kind of prep you or tell you what they no expect. because remember that we talking about still on the, the first day that i had met him when oh, i did the first scene uh, with yeah, him yes yes and so no i didn't have no mm -hmm. preparation or anything he had to get me before i left Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we had to do it right then and there. And so yeah, so I was nervous. I wasn't prepped. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. And so my second scene that I had went to for West Coast production was with Dominico. Mm -hmm. And so I was in there and I went downstairs. I came in. It was like this three story house. It was so beautiful. It was really nice. It was like a beautiful day too. <laughs> and um, I got out the car and I walked in and I hear. Oh, uh, like I hear somebody like screaming. I'm like, oh my god, he's killing her! <laughs> and they were like, there was I think it was probably like three or four girls in there. If I'm not, and if I'm not mistaken, it was Sydney Capri who was mm -hmm. doing the scene at the time. And she was like, I mean, like the noise that was coming. I was like, oh my god, like he's hurting her or something. Like it was just like, <laughs> you know, me coming in and not knowing what to expect. And so um, I sat down in the makeup chair. And you know, at that time, uh, Antonio had told me like a few things of what was going to happen, but not, yeah, you right. know, everything. So you know, I get in there and I sit down, and um, I was getting ready to do. She was doing my makeup and I heard like oh my god she was screaming I was like uh-uh <laughs> <laughs> not me so I was like uh-uh I'm not finna do this so I was thinking of ways yeah. on how to leave you know what I'm saying like oh my god I have to go to the bathroom this that that yeah. and this so um I had um I had told her, like, hold on, just, you know, give me a second. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. And so when I was getting ready to leave, Dominico came in. And he got to talk to me. He was massaging me and this and that. And I'm like, who are you? And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm the one that's going to be working with you. I'm like, oh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> he was very handsome and mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? He was very cool to talk mm -hmm. to. And mm -hmm. so, you know, me and him, we hit it off. And um, he just talked to me like the whole way through. He was like, you know, I was like, no, I think I'm going to leave. And he was like, no, why would you do that? And I was like, you hear her? He was like, no, don't worry about that. I got you. And I'm yeah. like, you got me? <laughs> and so, yeah, then it just went on from there. Oh, my God. That was like a crazy scene, too. Well, okay, you, you, you spoke uh, shortly about it, but he's, you said he becomes your agent. Dominico? Yes. yes. So how did that occur? <laughs> from that yeah. scene that we had, I had never left his side from that day. <laughs> How long? Mm. Yesterday? No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> 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 I'm like, was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think me and Dominico like went on an adventure for probably four years. Okay. Mm. okay. Four, maybe five. And as an adventure, this was outside of. Um, Business with y'all um, as a in a couple or a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. It was all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Good, bad, and different. Yes. yes. Bad. Oh, you know, oh, in every yeah. relationship, there's so, some bad okay, things, yeah, okay. there's some good things, absolutely, right. yes, yes, okay. but we made a lot of money together, okay. and that was the most important One thing. Day. Yes, yes, you. yes. So explain the first scene, the scene with uh, uh, the first, well, not the first scene, because that was... Uh, Just a try. Yeah, that's right. But the second scene, I guess, with West, West Coast production. Can you tell us, you know, what that was like? Like, uh, uh, you said that you were nervous a little bit, but what was that actually like to give our audience an idea of what it's like to be on a set, on a set? <laughs> but you want it from my first experience? <laughs> 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 Either one or whichever one you feel more comfortable talking about. Or... I mean, I felt comfortable with that yeah. one, too. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I had different feelings as time progressed. I got you. If you could you just go through saying? those and yeah. just kind of walk us through that. I, like I said, my first time, I was nervous. I was scared. And I guess it was a good thing that Dominico was there mm -hmm. to help me through it. Because things that I was hearing, I didn't know that there was going to be other people on set. I didn't know it was going to be a scene prior to mine. I didn't know any of these things that was going to happen happen and um I, yeah I 
my eyes were truly open that day when I <laughs> walked in the house. I hear everybody's just walking around like it's nothing, <laughs> like it's just normal. Mm-hmm. And they're upstairs and I'm downstairs in the basement trying to get my makeup done and stuff. I was scared, I was mm-hmm. sweating, I was really nervous. I think I, I was really young. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I was 20 or 19, 19 or 18 or something. I was mm-hmm. really, really young and so, you know, um, and it was crazy that he sent me there by myself. Mm. I, I would have had thought that he would have been there with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But no, he sent me there by myself. And by him doing that, opened up the door for me to get taken to someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, like it's a tricky game in mm-hmm. the industry with the agencies mm-hmm. and the producers and who you're dealing with. And then they have certain people to come in and. You know, talk to girls because they know what's really going on in the inside and not just from a Asian perspective. Right. You know? But yeah, I was nervous and, mm-hmm. I, and I was scared. And But he talked me through it. Mm-hmm. So I actually went ahead and did it. And it wasn't even that bad. Right. You know, it wasn't right. bad at all. Like, I actually had a lot of fun. Okay. I was amped up. Mm-hmm. You know, I got I got to come, which mm-hmm. was, which was, which was <laughs> good. <laughs> On top of me coming, I got paid. <laughs> yeah, 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 two for one. You know what I'm saying? So I had a great time. Yes, yes. Now, did you sign a contract with Antonio? Was it any kind of this? Was just a agreement, a verbal agreement? That was the contracts involved of being managing. Or, you, or said you, just, you said you got two. So yes, my my me with Antonio. Um, that first try, I don't know. I didn't sign any paperwork with him. Um, but I did sign paperwork with Dominico, and of course, you know, before you do any movie or anything, you gotta sign paperwork, you gotta show your ID, you gotta do all of this, put it up next to your face so they know that you are who you are and all that stuff, so. Not to, you know, show, you know, as far as fees and all that, how much, what's an agent take? Um, it depends on the person. Okay, okay. Um, it the depends agency. on, the yeah, the agency. agency. It depends on the agency. Some agencies take 15%. Some agency wow. takes 10%. Okay. Um, it just depends on who it is. And it depends on you. Gotcha. You as a person. Like, if you coming in and you know what's going on, mm-hmm. you know, you can work your own magic on your percentage with the agent. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know, some of them might really get you. Mm-hmm. Get, get got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So could you operate... Without an agent in that, or you need uh, the agent is essential part of the adult industry that you need them to create the bookings. I guess that's what the agents do. Mm-hmm. Could you do that on your own, freelance on your own? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I could mm-hmm. where I'm at now, mm-hmm. but coming in, no, you will, you will want an agent. You would want an agent, yes, so you can get. So they can set they can be, yeah because they know all the real companies you know the main companies the big companies the low budget companies and then they have like a roster of stuff of events that's coming up and things like that and what they may need and see like if you're a nobody and they don't know you they can't call you if they get a cancellation and say hey do you got another girl or do you have da 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 you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying we need something extra and so when you're independent you may not get as much. Unless you're all the way in, you know what I'm saying? That means that you got to start going to the actual companies, Mm -hmm. come in, showing up, you know, when you do go to the actual companies, it's just like a whole, I feel, you know, they're going to be mad at me, but Mm -hmm. I feel it's a little degrading Mm -hmm. sometimes because when you go to the agent, I mean, to the production yourself to try to get booked, Mm -hmm. so now you got to take your clothes off. You got to turn around. You got to spin around. They got to take pictures of you. Come you know what I'm saying? Then you got to, draft. yeah. Then they got to ask you what you want, what you into, this, that. You know what I'm saying? But opposed to you having an agency, they already took pictures of you and they mm-hmm. send it to them. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to deal with them personally one on one. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You just do it one time and then yes. they send the pictures yes. out. Yes, yes. Okay. And see, then your agent is gonna make sure that you get the most. Mm-hmm. Out of okay. the situation, you feel me? Absolutely, absolutely. Gotcha. If you don't make no money, he don't make no mm-hmm. money. Right. Right. You know, and then on top of that, you tell your agency what you want. Mm-hmm. I want X, Y, and Z. So what he has to do now, if I say I want two thousand for mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. then he's gonna have to find a way to give me what I want and still get his off the top. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so that's you know when you have a good one. <laughs> now you you know you've done these scenes how long would you say 
you get comfortable. Like, it becomes more, you know, less, um, uh, I guess, more or less, it's, it's more easy. You know, it, it gets easy. Where it's not, um, you, the, the, un, the uneasy feeling that you were feeling in the beginning. How long would you say it takes? Never. I mean, you know, you just... Because <laughs> you never know what to expect. You never know who okay. you're really going to deal with, or what you're really going to be okay. dealing with, you know, that day. So, you know, it's always a... Just like... When you get on stage, it's always like, you know, you get those nerves, like, oh, my God, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. but you still push through it and you do it. Okay. So why don't you know if you deal with an agency, I would think that it would be more set on what you deal with. You should know what it is. It's not like something shady going on or whatever. Oh, no, so no, no, no. I don't think that it's a shady thing uh, going on. Um, so what do you mean by, you like, uneasy, you don't know what's going to happen that day type deal? What do you because mean I don't that? know what this man is working with. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was trying to find it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what this man is working with. Okay, I, I don't know how. I mean, he even had some pussy even today, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's been really happening? You know what I'm saying? So that's the nerves part. Um, okay. You know, no, not not being scared like somebody's gonna Do come in or like anything. No, because no, no, yeah, no, no. I've never right. felt that way because it is always secure. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be afraid of anything. You know what I'm saying? As long as you just do what you say, go do. So when you get booked, or, you know, you say we got the agent calls, whatever. You get booked. Um, what kind of information do they give you? You know, outside of you know location and stuff. What kind of information do they give? You? Um, depending on who you are. Like when you're new, they don't tell you necessarily. They tell you what you're gonna be doing. Okay. For example, like if you're doing a boy girl, girl girl, DP, animal, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're doing, of course they have to tell you exactly what you're gonna be doing. They're gonna tell you how much you're gonna get paid okay. for the scene that you're going to do in the location. Mm-hmm. You know, the makeup artist and stuff and okay. the producer name and that's it. And then okay. you, you you said the and the person you're working with. Yeah. You, you no, get, no. You don't get the that. producer. No, sometimes they don't tell you necessarily who you're going to be working with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. And and that just depends on your agency or how long you've been there to know what questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so what's like, okay, you go from makeup to, you know. Come costume. On, costume, what? yeah. And, you know, you, you're about to do what you do. And, um. You know, we see what we see. How long does that process take? Like, what? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Filming a scene, how long? Yeah, does you it know, take? say we, you know. Yeah, are we talking like an hour, thirty minutes? Oh, I wish it was an hour. No. Oh, really? I wish it was thirty minutes, you guys. <laughs> 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 no, because um, it can take anywhere between five hours, four hours sometimes and that's only because when you first get there and your starting time from when you first get there when you first yeah. get there it's an hour and a half for makeup okay. for makeup yeah. for your hair and all that stuff then you have to put your outfit on and stuff you know you gotta make sure you take a bath and like I tell all the girls please dish 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 before you know you mm-hmm. get there that's um, proof. yeah proof. absolutely mm-hmm. and <laughs> so <stupid. laughs> And um, and then uh, you know we have to take pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And each position that you guys do, you have to take pictures of that. So you got to stop mm-hmm. and like, okay, so we did doggy style. So now you got to take pictures of it in halfway out. Uh, you know mm-hmm. all that extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that takes even longer. Makes mm-hmm. the process even longer mm-hmm. because you know it's a job. It's not okay. just like we just. Having this wonderful time like that is really mm-hmm. a job. job. Gotcha. <laughs> now you talk to these ages, you know. I guess over your career, you get you get more, um, more, uh, you know. I guess uh, more. You're a little bit stronger in your career, and you got you got more say so. Yes. Um, so do you get to a point where you tell the age, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm mm-hmm. gonna, I can do that, and I can do that. Do you? What were your do's and, and you don'ts. What, I, what I'm not going to do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I didn't do, like, the whole, like, game type thing. I, I wasn't doing none of that. Um, I wasn't doing none of the 
uh, you spitting, pissing, all that stuff on me type of stuff. I wasn't trying to get into doing any of those type of things. Um, I did like um, some like dominatrix type stuff that I would get into, and that's cool. Um, but I didn't do like double penetration. But majority of stuff, you know, I'm a girl, girl. I'm a fine girl. <laughs> now you dominated you, you were doing the they weren't you know hitting you oh no 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 see my agent after when I was dealing with Dominico was Ron Ellis man so rest in peace and okay. you know he was on some other shit but he was good to me but you know everybody knows Ron that's in the industry okay. that was in my era everybody knows Ron and uh, either you like him or you hated him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There was no in between with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So what was personally like? Why would you uh, like him or hate him? What? Because Ron was crooked as hell. Mm. Uh oh, man! So rest in, yeah. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he was crooked. There's some girls you would you would say his name too. They'll be like, "F him!" Mm -hmm. They'll get up, start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that nigga burning him. I'm like, don't say that. But you know, Ron was on some other stuff. But. I loved him because he's the one who really gave me a chance on different things, and he's the one who had the porn house. Mm -hmm. Many. Mm -hmm. That the girls that come in from out of town and stuff who did movies, they come stay over there at his house. So he was the agent who was getting girls from different states and stuff, and then they would come down to his house, and he'll have them there for probably like a month. A few weeks or something, they'll shoot as much as they can and send them back on about their way. <laughs> so, on the different scenes or the different acts, do you get paid differently or is it uh, just a set rate for whatever? How, how does that work when you talk about the rates? Um, when it comes to the rates, it depends on who you are, mm -hmm. who your agency is, and what you're willing to do. And um, each scene is different. If you doing girl girl, you get paid one thing. If you're doing a boy girl, you get paid another. If you're doing anal and so forth and whatnot. But it, it depends on the girl or or your agency, on how much money that you get. Everybody gets a little something different, you know, especially with white girls get paid more. Mm -hmm. Before before you get into that, I was about you, um, could you there was something before you said you were going into Ron Ellis. What made you leave Dominico? Oh, no, I was still with him. You were still with Okay, mm -hmm. but you just switched agents. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Dominico wasn't really an agent. Okay. He was more so, he was a producer, okay. and he was a talent also. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, and he helped me with that other agent. I guess he didn't like Antonio, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are some of the, uh, in your era, the male talent that you worked with? <laughs> um, there was, let's see, Prince Ashur, yeah, he's one of my favorites, and um, Ethan Hunt, I love him too, and um, Rico, Str Rico Strong, yeah, yeah, he was great, and um, yeah, um, let's see, uh, I, know, I, I, I can't think of his name right now, which is crazy because I love him, uh, we got... Wesley Pipes, and, um, damn it, I'm so mad, I can't think of this one's name. <laughs> so these are the ones you really... Yeah, so like, like when I did movies, I really only did them with a certain people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? There was certain people I, I wouldn't do a scene with, mm -hmm. and then there was others that I'm like, okay, yeah, them are my go-to people. Who wouldn't you do a scene with? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't remember his name mm -hmm. right now. I really don't. <laughs> I used to call him the Predator, but that is not his name. <laughs> that is not his name. But, um, was it Nate? No. Something threat. Something. I, I just didn't like him. And he mm -hmm. used to be on TT Boy thing a lot. And he just, like, did something to me I didn't like. So. Refuse to do mm -hmm. any scenes with him, period. Like, as in disrespect you or? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All types of things. Um, and let's see. Well, I can't think of his name. And I did um, Little Cuties with him. Justin Slayer. Yes. 
I love Justin for yeah, okay. you. Yeah, he's one of the ones you like. Yes, yeah, I, I love him. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Chocolate. Now the ones, the ones that you put on the list that you wouldn't work with, is it because of past experience or was it rumors within the industry that these people are bad people, stay away from that type deal? You know, no, they had to do something to, to me. me. So it's yeah, a bad experience yeah, it was a pr- It's not even that, yeah, bad experience, but not that because I had like, did a scene with them, a bad experience. Just mm-hmm. like, um, you know, we has, used to have porn parties and stuff like that. So, you know, we had certain houses that we go to, certain clubs that well, we would go to. What's a porn to. party? Like, <laughs> when you want to know. Yeah, that's that, that, that part of mine. That's what I'm asking. A board party. What, what, never heard of that before. Well, it? when I, you know, was really in the industry like that, um, my porn party, the porn parties that we used to go to, so all the, you know, porno girls or guys and stuff would come, and mm-hmm. it would only just really be us and just like people that we would invite to come to the party. We have pool parties, and you know, it turns yeah. into a sexual function. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we, we had lots of rooms and stuff. We yeah. just had a good time, and we was able to do that because we were familiar and mm-hmm. good with each other and stuff. So we had a lot of little porn parties that mm-hmm. we would have, and um, like premieres and stuff that we would go to a club and then we'll come back. So more than likely, we'll be at Lexington Steel's house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turned okay. up. Mm-hmm. Okay. How how was he? Was he one of the ones that you liked, or or the school, or like Lexington Steel was like one of the most coolest guys ever. When when I would get like upset, cause when, you know I'm a fire sign, mm-hmm. so when I get upset, I'm like you know my head's about to blow off. Mm-hmm. And but when I would talk to him, he was so calm. Like, he just kept me so calm. Like, even if I was like, ah, he'd be like, yeah, you know, I'd be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he was a real cool guy. Gotcha. So, is that just as much male talent in the industry as female, or is it is it about equal, or is it way more female talent than, than men? It's or, way more female talent way more. because they always try to find, you know, new faces, new mm-hmm. things. And with the male talent, it's... Um, they have certain men that they can rely on mm-hmm. because we may have a lot of guys mm-hmm. that come in and they say, oh, I can do it, I can do mm-hmm. it. And then once they really get there on camera and the producer's like, yeah, put your leg up or he's behind you underneath your ball doing this and then they can't perform. Mm-hmm. And so then they don't give us, parts. right. They don't, <laughs> they don't give us that money shot. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so when, if we don't get no money shot, we don't get no money. Nobody gets paid. Without Nobody on the set? Nobody. Oh man! Mm-hmm. Don't, you gotta do so 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 everybody's cheerleading this. Yeah, guy. so we don't want to. Yeah, cheer. Yeah, <laughs> cheer. On. He, he might have fluffers and everything. Yeah. Hey, you get over here. And- Keep it going. Keep it ready. <laughs> I did not realize it. So that's why women like working, or the female talent like working with certain, certain, certain ones. Same. Absolutely. Because they know. They, they know what do, you do. They don't want to do all I this I want to get in here, get this done, and get out. If I'm with an amateur, sometimes I have to be there all day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because we got to keep him to a certain, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, nobody has time to do uh, that. So, I want to have a professional. <laughs> so do you talk, are you talking trash to this guy to get more? Are you talking nice to him? Like, hey, come on. Well, I'm always nice. Like, yeah. I mean, no. but I, I'm sure that there's frustration that builds in this if you No, I have, to, I have to be nice. I can't have an mm-hmm. attitude until later. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. for me to show him any energy of, of, right. of anger or something, then it distracts him. Yeah. From doing what he needs to do, and I need him to be at 100 at all times. Yeah, so I'm just, yeah, it's rubbing his mind, rubbing his personal. Yeah, baby, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you, has it ever happened where it just it didn't happen? Yeah. It happened. And it was one of the good ones, too. It was just mm. crazy. So the, so, the good guys know they, they can have bad days, too. Yeah, oh. we all can have bad days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But some of them is more worth it than others. You know? I got you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, were you upset when that happened? I was very upset. Yeah. <laughs> Because it was crazy. I don't know. Don't be mad at me, okay? But <laughs> Byron. Byron Long. I did a scene with Ayanna Angel mm-hmm. and John Q and me. And it was supposed to be, a four, you know, it was supposed to be all four of us. Mm-hmm. And initially, the, the scene was for me, Ayanna, and, Brian, and Byron Long to do the scene. Okay. But 
Byron, for some reason, he been begging us like, oh my God, I need you and Ayana together. Oh my God, that's like my perfect dream. And we like, okay, okay. So I finally, Ayana comes into town. You know, she was always in and out. So she finally gets there. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it now. Da, 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 da. So, you know, we're out there and um, we get ready to do the scene for the life of him. He your heart. I don't know if he got scared, if it was just too much for him, knowing like, oh my God, it's both of them for real. They're going to like... I mean, we, were, we were talking so much shit to him, you know what I'm saying? But prior to the scene, not, you know, because he couldn't perform, we were talking because we already both mm -hmm. had no, a no. scene with him, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So we know we, we, we get into trouble, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? But we, we're going to talk this shit because it's both of us. Power of this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So, and so we we was talking shit, da 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 da, and then he got there. He was like, we were like, wait a minute, what 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 what, what is this? What is going on? So John Q happened to be there too, and so he was like, well, shit, I'm standing, I'm be like, Fred, you're not even, you know, all the way. You know, he's bigger than you, but yeah. I guess, but I'm on a, and you know, I should have never did that because we're talking shit to the wrong person because then I was talking shit to him and I should have never did that because he came in and killed us. <laughs> <laughs> he came and killed us. You hear what I'm saying? We were like, I'm like, where did that energy come from? <laughs> oh, there's, there's somebody at the house right now Googling. Uh, there's Yana, uh, how you spell Yana, you know. He killed us. <laughs> He did. We were like, we were like both of us, me and her. We're both like, are you gonna come yet? Can you just come on and go? What the hell is going on? <laughs> He's like, no, you get this shit. And I turn around. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you, you spoke briefly about it and um, how about fair pay? About what? Fair pay. Like the, you said, white people. Okay. By, and so what would you say the difference is and or, you know, we know why, I guess we can say why, but what would you say is the, um, that, that stigma? Why is it like that? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, because I think we're most definitely better. <laughs> As black women, but, um, I don't know, you know, they feel, uh, white women, okay, so this is the crazy part. If a white woman never have sex with a black man, she gets paid the ultimate, the ultimate dollar. Mm -hmm. Like, and then like, like Sarah J at first, she wasn't doing black guys. And then all of a sudden she started doing black guys. And then her value went down. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Which is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? And so, um, they talk shit like, oh, you know, you'd have that black. So, you know, your value is not as the same. A white girl can come in and she can get top dollar, like, straight from the gate. Mm -hmm. But the black girl won't. Mm -hmm. She got to build all the way up to it. And I think mm -hmm. that's really, like, a minimum mm -hmm. of a certain amount of mm -hmm. money that you would get. Now, you said Sarah J. Did you know her personally? Yeah, I know. So what, what made her? She's making all this money. What And she knew this was going to happen. Why did she make that decision across over? She made more over? money there. Really? With the black man, you know. You I guess it was contra yeah, controversy oh. or something, I guess. You know, she got a big old butt and everything yeah. else. And so I guess, you know, well, she had probably already milked them for as much as she could. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Know. On the other side. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, let me go make <laughs> <laughs> What was the, back of your career, what was the craziest thing you ever saw on set? It's like, I don't know. What do you mean crazy? It, 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 what it, you it, may it, think is crazy, it, I may not. Like, what do you mean crazy? I, we'll go wrong for you. Yeah. What were you like? I, like, a, I can't believe that happened today. Oh, uh, well, I had did a scene with Marcus, mm -hmm. with Mr. Marcus, and like, it was like, it was like really good. And we were like really going at it and stuff. But this boy like bust my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say he busted like for real, like we wasn't supposed to be doing no anal or nothing, you know? And he was on top of me, went from behind, split my asshole open. Like we I had to stop the whole scene. I was bleeding to pouring ice cubes in my butt. <laughs> Her mouth is mouth, you dropping ice cubes. He's like, okay. Just the mere fact he knew what to do. This wasn't the first time this happened. Hello. Just because he knew Hello. what to do. Hello. Hello. 
Like, he put ice cubes on my butt, in my butt, and stuff, and blew it for me and everything. I was like, oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> he's feeling, he's feeling bad. He's so, yeah. so, was that the end of the set for that day when that happened? Or you had to keep going? Uh, no, I told you, if there's no come, we don't get paid. So, no, I had to keep going. I had to, like, you know, suck it, suck up. it up and go on about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think I'm done. Hey, hey. Yeah, I was so, I was so freaking mad. And I had like one of these white guys. He was like left for real. Mm -hmm. I was just sad for me because he said I was scaring him. Well, okay, so mm -hmm. I was doing a dominatrix scene for Vanessa Blue. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like a scene where the guy was supposed to be tied up and I was supposed to be like, oh yeah, and I caught him doing something and I was supposed to like have a knife and all this stuff, but I mean, the knife wasn't real. So I come up and <laughs> you and I'm still on <laughs> Oh my God, he started shaking the boy pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I got to go. I <laughs> said, so, wait, right. we're just, it's just role play. Like, yeah. calm down. He was like, uh-uh, I believed you. I was like, I was just playing. <laughs> and he <laughs> laughed. Vanessa went and she told Dominico, like, you got you one for real. <laughs> and she's crazier than me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> now, we talked about the, uh, the difference in pay between the white and black talent. Is it the same thing about male, female on the male side too? It's the same thing? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, you know, it's only certain men to get paid top dollar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have to really put in that work to get mm -hmm. that. Um, black talent is what you're talking about? Oh, just yeah. in general? No, oh, just in general. You mm -hmm. know, they want black cop more than they want. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, right? Yeah, look at your eyes. Right, uh -huh. because in order, you know, you can always have a pretty face man that's really gonna give her it's gonna give the reaction that you guys are looking for you know mm -hmm. you want to hear her scream you want to just know what these moans are you want her to come you want her yeah. to, so you know the and the man mm -hmm. is more mm -hmm. sacred than the woman because the women come a dime a dozen i can find a bitch at bus stop i can <laughs> find her over here at the at the gas station mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they mm -hmm. want to make some money real quick or whatever yeah. but a male talent that's good he comes a dime a dozen yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's probably, you know, about five to ten males who get paid top dollar. Can you name them? <laughs> I mean, of course, Lexington still gets paid top mm -hmm. dollar, but he has his own company and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there is Prince Ashur. Mm -hmm. He gets paid top dollar. Um, Justin Slayer. Mm -hmm. He gets paid top dollar. Um, Rico Strong. Mm -hmm. He get paid top dollar. Damn it. Yes, mm -hmm. Ethan Hunt mm -hmm. and um, Johnny. Goddamn Johnny. What is his last name? Johnny. Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can, ooh, he deserved it too. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny killed me. Y'all hear me? I did one scene with Johnny. He killed me. <laughs> and, and you know what? And I still need my rematch, okay? <laughs> you about to scream, uncle, uncle. <laughs> you spoke briefly about it, but um, hygiene. Um, is that often a problem, or and how does that dealt with? Do they ever say, hey, hey, hey we, we need to take a break? Check that. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if there's a woman on set and stuff, yeah, she's going to say something about it, and if you have a woman producer that's there, yeah, they're going to say some. Most of the men, they just want their money sometimes. They might not, and some of them may. And that's why I had, when I started coming on to the set, I made it um, a note that everybody has to ditch before <laughs> you start your set. What you talking about? Yeah, Everybody yeah. has to do it. You yeah. know, all the girls when you're coming on. And see, I say this because they be bringing girls that's really young, 18, 19, that don't even know their bodies. Mm -hmm. They don't know what, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, we're not having protection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, if you're going into her and then I got to see him do what you next, but I have to protect myself, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, we, I, I made sure that they did it. And a lot of producers... For me, making sure that they did it, they make sure that they have it on set mm -hmm. to make sure that you do it. But, you know, when they give you the test okay. 
and say that they clean or, you know, the test is in the computer and stuff or whatever, the test that you have. When when they see the test, they just assume you're good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't think like, you know, it's not going to detect that you have a yeast infection mm -hmm. or that you have a bacterial infection or, you know what I'm saying, or right. anything of that nature. And those things smell too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, um, they just go ahead. Man. So can you talk a little bit about the testing and the safety precaution and how that works in the industry? Right. Yeah, well, um, they made it to a point where we can only be tested by one company. And you have to go to the doctor's office to get tested. And then, like, like it's only in California where they can do your test at. But I can get a test here in Georgia. But I have to have blood sent to them. And they only can be the ones to test it because, you know, other people were getting doctored up tested mm -hmm. and all that extra stuff, you know what I'm saying? Or it come from your doctor, but that's not necessarily good enough because we have to be tested. Mm -hmm. Some companies want you tested every two weeks. But some companies want you tested at least once a month. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on... Gotcha. So what did you think or what was your feelings for, for that whole thing to happen with Mr. Marcus? Because he's kind of banned it from the industry, right? So he's not banned. Oh, no. Okay. Mm -mm. He went right back and started doing more. <laughs> oh, he did. Okay. So mm -hmm. what was your feeling on that? And can you kind of explain what happened with him and and you know your feeling? Well, with yeah, him? I mean, he went overseas. I guess like most of the guys do, they go overseas and mm -hmm. they do scenes with the girls. <clears throat> Some girls are working girls that's supposed to be because they have paperwork behind them and then you know sometimes you get caught up with the brazilian butts and you know what i'm saying and you just you know hey slipped into something um what happened is um it, you know it was everybody's fault okay because they wanted it was this particular girl who was there and they wanted to do the scene with her so bad and they wanted it to be with Mr. Marcus. They wanted it to be with him. And they could have chosen another guy, but they wanted it him. And he was like, you know, I just came back in from out of the country, da da da. I don't know if my test is all the way back, da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? He did the test anyways or whatever. But I guess they did it before the results had came up. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, she had syphilis, if I'm not mistaken, that it was. Yeah. And um um, you know, she got herself together, he got himself together, and it was crazy because it took a long time. And, you know, everybody found out about it, and everybody was mad with him. But, I mean, you have to be mad at the production also because they were supposed to get that paperwork back before they even allowed her to do a scene with him. Now, she may not know how to see if he has his paperwork. But mm -hmm. see, that's when your agent comes in. Your agent is supposed to know if she's doing a scene with this one, he's supposed to check his paperwork also to make sure that everybody was on the same accord. And, you know, somehow something slipped in between the cracks. Uh, money. Yeah. Oh, we gonna do this. Money and the name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think it was more so the name than it was about the money. You know, because they wanted it to be him. You know what I'm saying? Now, we all make mistakes, and we all do crazy things, and that's why you sign that paperwork. Now, when you sign that paperwork, you know anything can happen because we they can only protect you for things that are going on on set. But we don't know what happens if they have a personal, you know, boyfriend or girlfriend that's not on the set, you know what I'm saying? And you're having sex with them, and then, you know, you come back, who's to say they didn't have sex with somebody before they had sex with you, and now you're back here on set. Yeah. And, you know, you're spreading these things that's going on and stuff. So they start making it where um, um, we had to get tested every two weeks prior to every, you know, three weeks. And so and so now they have their own thing where you, if something is going on with you, you got to get quarantined. Like, they come to your house and get your ass. What? Yeah, they're not playing. They come get you. Straight. Straight up. And you got to sit there for two weeks until your test come back and you're good. So yeah, yeah, they're not playing with it anymore. The um, you talked about it earlier about the I guess people would come in town and they would stay at the uh, a house. Mm -hmm. So you know, the in, in houses. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm envisioning it like this 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 incoming uh, film house or a porno house, uh, like it, like a sort of porno sorority house. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it, um, <coughs> and they're staying together for weeks. So I'm assuming there's some. Cattiness, uh, you know, oh, yeah. some scraps. Oh yeah. Any yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. memorable stories, uh, or or heard about stories of this at a house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had 
plenty of stories. I didn't have fights no at one. these houses. I didn't have like I had a fight with uh, well, let me see, Candy Cream. And she's my good friend though. I love her to death still to this day, <laughs> even though all of that stuff. Yeah, and it was just really crazy and it was all behind I think it was Charlie Mac. Wait a minute, how did I not say Johnny Mac? Because he was, he's one of the top ten. You know what I mean? He started one of, you know, started everybody getting a lot of top dollars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Charlie Mac. Yeah. And um, well, hold on, let me tell you this story. Um, I think it was like my birthday party or something. And um, we had went to this nice club, like it was really nice, it was big. And um Lexington Steele and everything was there. Like, all the porno people was there. Uh, Diana DeVoe, me, Vanessa Blue. Like, uh, I can run the list. Like, it was a lot of us. We were there. We were having a good time. And um, some guys that came in that were not a part of the industry, and they were talking all this crap and stuff, and they made us feel uncomfortable. They was filling on a few mm -hmm. girls' asses and doing things they wasn't supposed to be doing. So we asked the security to escort them out the building. So the security escorted them out the building. So they had waited. For us, so we had came outside and stuff, and they knew that I was dealing with Charlie at the time and stuff. They got to fighting; we were all fighting in the street, like it was crazy. They stabbed him; he almost died that night. Charlie Mack, yeah, wow. he got a scar on his side right here because it was one inch away from his kidney. If he had it stuck in one more and he would have died. And I see the dude came and I'm running out there. I didn't grab him. We had a ministry on Hollywood Boulevard too, which is the crazy thing. I'm grabbing the dude yeah. back and he was, mm, mm, mm. man, it was crazy. It was so much blood. It was so much stuff going on. Was, that, that was just a real crazy experience. Yeah. And this is some, and this is someone just random. Random. Mm. Some random yeah. person at our event. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, I was even more so mad because we had, the, like, this super party that was going on at Lexington House after the fact. <laughs> and we didn't get to get to. <laughs> Me and your staff. Yeah. <laughs> You've mentioned it a couple times. So, you know, you dated a couple people in the industry while you were in the industry. Mm -hmm. Is that common? Yes. With the, okay. Yes. Is it easier that way? I think so. Because we all know what we're getting ourselves into. We all know what's going on. But, of course, you know, everybody individually love harder. Some some people love harder than others. And so, you know, I, I liked it because um, you knew what was up. I knew what was up with you. I knew you had to go to work. I had to go to work. We can only do certain things at certain times because we both had to be prepped and prepared. Yeah. Like, you know, if I knew I had a scene tomorrow, I can't have sex tonight. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the men. Now, the crazy part is is that I can only do one scene a day. You know, I have a vagina. My shit just gets wet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the man can do two to three scenes, which is crazy. Because he's the one that's supposed to be giving the nut. You know, like, mm -hmm. you really can come two, three times. But, you know, there's a few of them that were just that gifted. <laughs> right. That were able to do that. But mm -hmm. I can only do one scene. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. So is it... Do you ever come home from, is there ever that conversation we come home from work, what we just did? No, oh, why? Oh, okay, I'll just <laughs> I'm like, no, why? Why would we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. no, no. So have you ever dated anybody that wasn't in the industry during the time? And what was that like if you did? Um, did I? In the industry? No, I think all my people were kind of yeah. like... In the, in the time. Yeah. Now, once I've been, been out the industry, yes, I have, but it's still, you know, it's crazy mm -hmm. because people never let go of what they've seen on film and what it is in real life. Okay. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, you know, I mean, we all have fun. We all do certain types of things, but I'm just not that person all 24 7 of the day you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know like when i first came down here to atlanta this one guy had seen me i was standing in a line going trying to get into a club and this guy he was like oh my god i know who you are you're vita and he went and stuck his fingers in my poom poom and my homies beat him up though but i mean it was crazy and so because some people in their mind they think like oh that's what you do so you just freaky all the time. And it's like, no, fool, I got paid. It ain't about, I'm not running around just busting nuts on people. You know what I'm saying? Because if it was, <laughs> if it was that, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if it was only about sex, 
I don't what I need the camera for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I'm on camera. This is a job. This is a business, and so I'm getting paid for this. So don't think that because you see me on the streets mm-hmm. that I'm just some freaky ass girl who just want to be. You can't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a privilege. The hell is you talking about? You know what I'm saying? These people here that we, I'm doing it with, we're on the same level right. of things. You know what I'm saying? And so my personal life and business is different opposed mm-hmm. to the industry type stuff. But people don't, don't believe that. Now, you, you talked a little bit about the fight that you had, but that was in the porn house. Have you ever been involved or seen a fight on set? And if you did, like, what was it about? Um... And how did how did we get here from you know people not with clothes on going fist to cuffs? <clears throat> I have seen some fights on set, mm-hmm. especially when we do like orgy scenes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like orgy scenes, and and and, I, and I'm gonna tell you this, and, and it's not for the reasons that you think. Mm-hmm. I like orgy scenes because I can narrate the whole situation. <laughs> No, I just run around and tell people what to do. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, like I'm there, but I'm like, oh yeah, suck it, do this, do that, da, 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 da. they're doing this. Okay, yeah, turn around, spin on the dick, da, 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 da. and I might just be like, I ain't doing too much, but I'm telling everybody else what to do. Like I'm the producer on set or something. But um, I've had girls fighting on set because of a guy. You know, a girl thought she was dating this one dude and, you know, he was dating her and her and her. And they were all like low-key kind of friends, but none of them knew that they were dating. Only the first one knew that he was messing around with the other girls, but the other ones didn't know. You're going through um, a lot of your scenes and we've talked about them, you know, um, and you go through your career. What's the scene if you had to say, that's Vita Valentine? What's the, what's the scene that you would say your best word, like stamped, certified? Hmm. <laughs> I, I have a lot of them, but um, nice. let me see. I'm going to say <laughs> I did a scene with Wesley Pipes, mm-hmm. and I had a fan who used to tell me, like, um, when you do the scene with him, he talked to me. You shut his ass up. You tell him shut the. F-. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said okay. So I went. Oh, I went there, boy, and I was up in there, and I was going. I was rolling. I said, and yeah, and shut the. F-. <laughs> I, the fucking um, chair, like it. <laughs> I was going so hard. I was yeah. Yeah, then, wow! I was like, oh my god, I looked back down and I was like, just keep going. I was like, oh my god. So, what was Wesley saying? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? He shut it up. He didn't say anything. <laughs> now, you gave us a list of guys that you liked, but who's your all time? If there was only one adult, what? uh, that you had to work your entire career with, who would it be? Wow, that's a good question. <sighs> yeah, you had a long list of who you like, but you will only pick one. <laughs> pressure. That is pressure. Um, <laughs> <dang>. <laughs> um, <sighs> Prince Josh Short. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because he did a flip on me. Like, he did a stand and I turned and he did a flip. And when it ended in my mind, shit, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what is you doing? He was like, close your mouth because I really wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> I really wasn't ready for it. Mm-hmm. Now, you said your best scene, you know, you're certified. Is there a scene you like? Uh, you know, say a bad scene or the scene that maybe we know you're a goat, but what scene you want to say your best and why? Is my best? Or, or was it wasn't my best? Yeah. Oh. That's memorable. You know, kind of memorable or something. Um, I did a scene with this white boy. 
um, I can't think of his name, but he was like supposed to be like drunk or something, mm. and he had his hair all weird and all this extra <laughs> stuff. Mm. And I think like that was a terrible scene because I just wasn't really into it, and I wasn't really feeling like the whole vibe that was going on there. So yeah, kind of threw you that that and it just you wasn't in your zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not good. And then I think I did a scene with. Mm. <sighs> this is complicated because I did a scene with Brian Pumper mm -hmm. and say like I like Brian Pumper. Mm -hmm. I think at the time, yeah, I liked at the him. Time. <laughs> yeah, because Brian Pumper, you know, he has episodes. You know, sometimes he's he's good and sometimes he's like weird. You know what I'm saying? And, and I had to get to wise, know him. Yes, mm -hmm. I had to get to know him a lot more. Before, you know, if I would have known him then, like how yeah. I know him now, then I probably wouldn't have felt that type of way about him. Okay. But he's like, he likes, um, so we used to make a lot of jokes about him while stuff like, oh, he like girls is dirty and da 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 da. <laughs> and, it, and it's not, and it's not that. It's not that. Uh -huh. He likes, he likes, um, your body odor. So to if be... you take a bath, he don't want you to have s smell good soap. You know what I'm saying? So if you like, if you got Victoria's Secret and it has like that perfume smelling off the, he doesn't want that. I got one question for you. Like, how does this conversation come up in a confessional or something? Like, how, how, do you, how, how does this even? Because he just tells you. Oh, he tells you. Oh. He tells the girls before they do the scene, like, don't take a shower. Mm. Go run the lap. <laughs> <laughs> because he wants to smell your body. He wants to smell you who you are. He don't want you to have perfume on or none of that type of stuff. And he don't want you to be fresh out the shower or anything. And so we used to think that was like really weird. Like, why the hell do you want to do that? And so like, um, I had, I was about to get ready to do a scene with him. And I guess like my mental, mm -hmm. it was messing with me because of what he was saying at the time. So it like made my whole TT like, like turned off. Mm -hmm. It's like it was off. Like I can't mm -hmm. even do really do the scene. Like we tried it, but it yeah. just went and like it was off because I was like, he's nasty. And this is what he wanted. Nah, 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 nah. Until, you know, after the fact, I really talked to him and I understood what was going on. But Brian used to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Like he used to tell people he was, um, he was, uh, what's the dude from, uh, 50 Cent now group? Lloyd, Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks, yeah. Boy, did boy. Mm. You used to say he was Lloyd Banks? Yes. And I'd be like, you're more famous than him. Why would you say that? <laughs> like, that was crazy to me. I had no idea. But yeah, he, he'd be like, come with me. We're going to go recruit. And I'd be like, okay. So we'll go to the mall. So these girls were standing over there geeked up like, oh my God, oh my God, it's him. Oh, they're screaming. He was like, yeah, go tell him I'm Lloyd Banks. Boy, I'm not going to go over there and tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I disappeared on his ass. You got me, boy. Why am I going to tell him you're somebody that you're not? You know? <laughs> But yes, I love him to death too. He had a lot of he that boy crazy. That's who y'all need to interview next. He got his real <laughs> stories. Okay, I can't even tell y'all his stories. So, what made you? Uh, well, let me ask this question first. Were you in the industry when they had? Didn't they have a HIV mm -hmm. AIDS outbreak in the industry at some point in time? I wasn't in in the industry at that, at that time. Yes. When, when would that happen? Do you know? What time <laughs> I think it was before. Before you. Before me, and it was with some dude, but he went back to Africa. I can't think of his name. Oh, okay. Right now, and that I mean that that was just people coming back and doing scenes and not taking the time that they needed to take for the Testing. test to come back. It was before all the testing and everything went on. The before, no, we always had the testing, okay. but it just, they improved the testing now. I got you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like before, excuse me, you could go to your personal doctor mm -hmm. to get the test right. and bring it back. But now you can only do it from one person. I mean, one company, period. Gotcha. So what made you transition out of the industry? Um, what happened? I transitioned out of the industry because, you know, I have I have a daughter and my daughter's like what twenty two now. Mm -hmm. And so at the time she was getting older and sixteen and she had a lot of girls that were saying stuff to her, you know, trying to peer pressure her to do certain things and I'm telling her, you know, you're not me, I'm me and I've done the things I've done in it. And so in order for me to try to keep her in shape and to keep her where she needed to be, I had to stop because I couldn't have more stuff coming on. You know, these, these kids got phones and stuff and they're 
on the on the internet and they're showing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like here, look, this your mom right here. She on a new movie. You know what I'm saying? And so I stopped for the, for that reason. I got you. I got you. So was there a lot of teasing and stuff because of that with your daughter? Did she go through any of that stuff with the kids and friends and stuff? Um, my sister went, I mean, my sister, oh Lord. My daughter had went through some of it, yes. and mm. But I talked to her constantly right. on a lot of different things to make her understand and to be stronger. But, you know, kids is cruel. That's People cruel. do certain things. Yeah. And mm. so. You get at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got you. So. So if it wasn't for that, you 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 would have stayed longer. I mean, it wasn't nothing about the industry. You you enjoyed what you were doing, so you would have been in there longer if it wasn't for yeah, you need a new child, probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I had a lot of fun. If you go to the current time now and you think about how um, things have changed, you know, people are doing direct content. You know, more independent. You know, internet is stronger in this area now than what it was before. Um, what do you think about people doing um, their own independent content? Um, I think it's messing up the porn industry. I think it's not, um, people just think that they're their own stars within themselves. They're coming up with certain things and I, I don't really like it. Mm -hmm like that you know what i'm saying because everybody's not meant to do this and then there's girls out here that really wasn't meant to do it but you know hey they're gonna live a life and i'm not gonna hit on anybody for mm -hmm. wanting to you know be who they want to be but it's not gonna give everybody the money and certain opportunities and you know when you're doing porn and stuff it's you're doing porn because you you have a certain talent when you're really, you know what I'm saying, really a porn star. You have a certain talent, certain gifts and things like that. And these people don't have no gifts and no real talent. And like a lot of movies that I have watched lately, they like bored. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's no real sense. It's like everybody's just doing some of the same type of, of things. And they're not giving no real life or energy. Like, you know, he's drunk. He come home with this bitch. They fuck him. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Now, have you done any of your own um, it, um, independent con um, content? content? Like a, um, OnlyFans, things like that? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, yes. I have my OnlyFans content. Let <laughs> me get you a dress up there before you leave. You know, throw it up. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, you think it's more enterprising? Like for, you know, I guess uh, for someone, you know, I guess it's more, I don't know, lucrative, you know. What, to be on my fans only page? Yeah, just doing it that way. Instead of doing it the traditional, you know, way. traditional booking. And, you know. I mean, yes, because then I don't have to deal with so much of the headache of mm -hmm. having to really get another person, the lightnings and all of that good stuff. I don't have to do all the extra pictures and stuff that comes with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that just makes it not professional. That just makes it like for my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I got you. If you had to say, you know, exclude yourself, and we'll just do female, who are your um, top five female performers? Not exclude yourself, can't exclude yourself. Glad you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> My protégés. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Roxy Reynolds, which is little one. Misty Stone, that's my other one. That's my baby hey girl. Um, we have... Uh, I got another one that I made, and a lot of people don't even know her because um, her dad took her out. Mm. Um, but I'm going to go back to her. Victoria Allure, um, Ariana Angel, and Beauty Dior. Yeah, 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 I love beauty. Mm -hmm. I love beauty. Now you, almost, you said you about to go back. Because I'm thinking about the one, the other girl that I have bought into the industry, and I can't think of her name right now, which is crazy. I know it's crazy, but I was actually going to have her do, um, she was going to be, uh, the Pharaoh girl, the, because they were going to do a whole nother porn off of her, 
and it was going to be like the Pharaoh stuff and money type mm-hmm. stuff. And she was going to be the girl that was in it. Now, she did Little Cuties with me with Justin Slayer. Okay. And she's in that movie right there, the other girl that I'm talking about. But that was my, my other little protege that I had bought into the industry. And her dad, like, found out she was doing stuff in. He came up to the set. Boy, it was crazy. <laughs> he shut it down. He not, took my baby. Not my baby. Not today. <laughs> he took my baby. Yes, yes, yes. So she was officially retired from that moment on? Yes. She was officially retired. Yeah, but she was beautiful. Right. Like, go to the little cuties, the ones that mm-hmm. I did, and you'll see who I'm talking about. Oh, there's somebody she right now. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was beautiful. <laughs> I, um... Wanted to ask you these things, and some of these things you talked about. We're just going to go over the myths of the industry, okay? okay. And you just say true or false. Okay. We talked about some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Before you mm-hmm. do that, let me ask one question. Do you have any regrets for choosing the path that you chose? Is there any regrets at all? Or things that if you had to do it over again, you'd do different? I mean, of course. We would all say that we would do things differently because of the knowledge that we have now. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do I regret doing porn and stuff? No. no. Absolutely not. Because I did it knowing <clears throat> what it was, knowing, when, you know, not fully knowing the outcome toward the end would be, but knowing what was going on. And I made that choice. And I mean, I'm happy. I've lived a lifetime. Like some people that are older than me, that are younger than me, have, have could not even fathom mm. the life. Mm-hmm that I have had, you know, the people Mm -hmm. that I have met, the places (laughs) that I have been Mm -hmm. due to the industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I I don't regret anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you referenced something happened at the end. So what what, what were you referencing if it happened at the end? Was... Like like knowing that uh, people are going to know all the things that I've done as far as sexual wise, you know, uh, some some things as far as having a having a family for real or having a relationship or being in a relationship, like, you know, you, you need a strong person to be with you because men can go out and have sex with 150 million people, women. And, they, and women will forgive them and they're cool with that. But when it comes to a woman and just the thought of some men just knowing like, oh, my God, of all the things that are going on, they, he has to be strong. And so just, you know, that alone sometimes makes me be like, dang, you know, maybe I should have did a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you know what? The way that this world is right now, ain't nobody being really faithful. You know, because of the industry, it's too much. You're 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 able to have access to too much. You know what I'm saying? I I don't have to go to the club or go to another state to go mm-hmm. see this person or that person. You feel me? I could just go on my Instagram and I can see them. I can DM them. I can say all different types of things to get them to come to see me. You know what I'm saying? And so because of that, women are so loose out here due to music and certain things that they're hearing and, and things like that that shit ain't nothing sacred <laughs> that I feel anyway you know what I'm saying there's a lot of women that just experience you know what I'm saying and I mean I'm experienced I might pew, blow your fucking mind <laughs> <laughs> the um some of these you talked about you know these are just myths I just pulled up and um, just wanted to, you know, um, run by you. You talk about a myth. One myth they say is that the end of the scene occurs in the beginning. Sometimes. It does. Yes. Sometimes. Uh, As far as the the ending meaning like uh, they know what position they want you to end in and so they're going to take the pictures and do all of that stuff right now so where it's all fresh and so you know you're not sweating and all that type of stuff so they just want the best pictures and stuff for it so they might start at the end and allow you to do to complete the scene like not the not the money, money shot no no oh no. okay okay just start position wise right I right got you. absolutely got you. Um, another one, um, a myth. Squirting real or fake? It's real. 
It's real. It's real. Some, okay, so, I mean, <laughs> some women be pissing on you, and they will say that they're fucking squirting, but no, that's not squirt. Um, the squirting is real, and I know for facts, because I have done it. It's real, and when you do do it, it takes a lot out of your body. Like, it's like a real soda can that you just shook up, and you popped it, and you squirted all over the place, and then the girl, she's like exhausted, because it takes a lot out your body to squirt like and the first i found out that i could squirt is i did a scene with these white boys and they was just like yeah we're gonna do it and they had all these they was like they had three people with long fingers <laughs> and they said, we gotta get to this part so most men who got like a hook yeah. Got a hook on it. Mm -hmm. They can make a woman squirt because when that hook gets into that certain part because you got to get to this level of this bubble part and you feel it and you get there and you get the and you're gonna feel it and that motherfucker gonna sound like it like a water bottle is you're gonna hear it you know what i'm saying and when it you're gonna feel it you, you know, and when a woman piss it comes from her hole from her pee hole you understand what i'm saying her pussy it comes out of the of the whole side of it's coming out of that part you feel me? Opposed to now the girl, she squared up and she opened up her pee hole and you see it like <laughs> <laughs> and you feeling this coming from all the ends of your shit? Uh, yeah, she squared. <laughs> it's real. That's so, that's so, yeah, we were there with you. We were there with you. <laughs> now we already talked about this one that um this is the only well one of the few fields that women make more money than men. Yes. Primarily, you know, a lot of times in in, in yes. professional careers, mm -hmm. um, they do not. Uh, we're putting on here. You say these scenes are four, five, six, whatever. You know, the length of time that most men use some form of medication. Um, Did you say that? No, I'm just. This is a oh. myth. I'm just, as a myth, true or false? You know. No. Uh, the the men that I told you that are you know my top ones and stuff like that. No, they don't. Uh, using and it's not necessarily good to use it because then when you start using stuff and then when you really need to perform you won't be able to so it's not really good to use mm -hmm. them not saying that people haven't mm -hmm. or don't mm -hmm. because some some do mm -hmm. you know but not all and not all the time mm -hmm. because some people might use certain things and then they can't come mm -hmm. because they need longer Times yeah, of performance, a, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Okay. And you already answered this last myth, which is our orgasms real on set? No, not all of them. Not all of them. But you okay? But you said it can happen. Listen, they're not all real on set. But if I do it and you see <laughs> me do it, it's because it was real, and that's because they work and it got done you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah because i didn't been on saying like oh my god can you find me somebody else <laughs> i'm retarded like i didn't do some some crazy stuff when i was young you know what i'm saying i i, I might feel a little bit bad now uh, about it but you know yeah i didn't been on set talking all kinds of <laughs> now tell us about um tell us about your products um you know things that you were selling that you were um so yeah, I'm I, I got um trap royalty, and um it's a clothing line mm -hmm. and stuff, and you know we got clothes out, pants and shirts and sweaters. So have I actually today? have, yeah, I just didn't. It got kind of hot, so I had took it off. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, stand up. Go ahead, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, these are my oh, they can't even see. These are my pants. Really cute. You have your. Oh, you got turned that camera too, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to turn it to our camera too. <laughs> I was supposed to have it on, but it didn't got hot, you guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you know we got sweaters and stuff out here. Trap royalty. Make sure y'all go on to trap royalty. You see it right here, and check us out. Online, you can go on to Instagram and check us out. And then I also I have toys and stuff that I'm coming out with right now. 
and um it's off of black friday and so i got a rose right now that i'm going on i'm sorry guys because i was supposed to bring it but i didn't get my shipment in and it come in uh yesterday like i was supposed to but um you definitely can hit me up on instagram and that's v-i-t-a-v-a-l-e-e-t-i-n-e um, that's my Instagram. Make sure you guys come check me out there. And then if you want to know anything else about any of the clothing line or businesses or anything, DM me. I'll hit you guys back and let you know what's going on. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, uh, do you want to get out your OnlyFans as well? Or, or? Uh, yeah, uh, my OnlyFans is Vida Valentine, V-I-D-A. Now, you have to remember, V-I-D-A Valentine is for my OnlyFans, but V-I-T-A is for my Instagram. Gotcha. Okay? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And just in case you don't get it, you can always Instagram me and, I mean, DM me, and I definitely send it to you guys. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, one one final question um, before we go. Um, you know, Jordan retired in in '96. Um, you know, and he came back to play for the Washington Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is there a chance that uh, Vita Valentine, you know, comes out comes out of the Raptors and and, and goes back on the court? Mm. Yeah, no, I think my my time has passed <laughs> on that level. But, I mean, you know, I, I do have my only fans. And so, you know, I still, you know, do little little things on there, you know, on my personal type situation. And then, you know, I, I'm about to start bringing other girls and things like that on there. But as far as, like, on a big mm -hmm. camera, mm -hmm. yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we, we want to thank you uh, for doing this for us. We truly really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks um, for having me, guys. We keep, and, you know, we um, want great future success for all the adventures that you're, um, that you're going into. Thank you. Thank well, we you. We want to um, thank you for um, watching Jack Moves Podcast. And, you know, your IG, tell them Jack Moves Podcast. We here. Jack Moves Podcast. <laughs> and here, now, <laughs> so we want to thank you for... Um, uh, being our guest today and just continue to follow us at uh, Jack Moves Podcast. I got you. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for the opportunity of being here coming on your show. I appreciate it. Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts.